Blessings everyone. Now, this is a true account of what transpired on the evening of October 17th. This is from a member of the congregation and she has spoken to the star and I'm sharing this interview with you guys. It's really in-depth. Well, when I went here in the morning, um, when I saw a lot of the members, we all dressed in white because I get to understand that we all should wear white and it is community service and baptism service. So we all dressed in white and we went here and when we were here, we get a um, like update from the adjutant or the minister them and so what to do and so forth. So when we were, when we were here, he would say to us, um, he sold it here, so we should line up face to face like him facing you, him facing you, and we should spread on the towel along the walkway. We thought he was going to walk on them to go. And we were saying that they should say some word because, you know, they speak soft, everybody didn't hear what they were saying and so forth. So they were there lining up until he came up. And when he came up, so another people came in behind his vehicle, a diplomat, a diplomat. I knew I saw a police lady and someone just seemed like brown uniform, uniform like an inspector, something like that. And so other people came out of that vehicle and another car over there. I thought those people are from St. Ketchum, Spanish or something like that. The secretary came out and said everyone should have $1,444.04 into the envelope. So he said, oh, 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 um, you know, everybody running around getting silver to get the food amount that he said to put in it. Definitely, I didn't have any money. I only borrowed a thousand from my family to go there this Saturday morning. So I end up borrowing a thousand dollars from a church sister, and I get five hundred from one, and I get another five from one. So I end up with one thousand four hundred and forty-five dollars in my hand. So we were uh, neighbor calls for us to line up to go in around the other side, and everybody lined up. And we were here in the line for about maybe two, three hours. The rain came down, sun, everything. And you know, we were without shoes and all those stuff. And you know, people cramping your football, cramping and all those things. Because you know, some people don't use their football. Half an hour after, I saw um, the policeman went in. They want me to talk. So I saw their football went in. He came out back. I saw the lady in the blue went in. What time was that? Maybe about in the fourth or fifth And I saw uh, the other man. I don't know if that one from the country country. They came out but they were looking sad. And they hang on their head and walked past us to in line. I said, Well, they look so sad and they were happy so they were in the air. And somebody said, uh, His Excellency run them out. So we say, hmm, strange. Anyway, we're there waiting for our name to call or whatever to go inside. Everybody was just waiting patiently. We didn't rush, we didn't quarrel, we just waiting patiently. We ran fasting. Everybody told that everybody should not eat. We should be on fasting. So everybody was on fasting. So eventually, at about maybe 5 30, 6 o'clock, he would call in, most of the men first went in and then after that, before we went in, we have to wash our foot before we went in and then when we went in, he would told us put the offering in the basket and uh, the end up in the basket and they, also, they, I think they say we have to have carnage to put on the altar, so we said, I first went to see we take care of them so I go into church. Like we never really give you know, like, like corn meal or so. And he said it's strange. Anyway, then I went in. He said I should put my offering in the basket. And 
submitted it on the table. When I, my hand was actually close in the rock, the sheet that dropped me. So opening up the offering, the envelope and the carnage fell into the basket. I almost attempted to take out the carnage, but it's like some push me and leave it. And I, I heard like he said, hmm. And he, I walked out and he said, come. And he planned us where to go, like he would put us in a certain category, like he would choose the angel in category, and he would place us where to live, where to go, and that's why he positioned us when he went in. When we were leaving, he said to us, I'm not going to get up. Turn your back, walk out, don't look at me. Don't let your wind or your sheet touch the ground. Because it is not dirty up and it did not to touch the ground. Mm -hmm. Take our time and walk patiently out. We all came out and tried to find our way to our room. So everybody was like leaving in different directions. So we didn't get to see each other, talk to each other. Because I went home to 11 that night. So what was so strange about that Saturday? That, that sort of make you get a little suspicious. Wow. Listen to what I've just described. Yes. Uh, what was so strange? What was strange is the oxen, we take the part of the oxen to distribute. The girl that came out to me said that, he said, he did she got, um, we will call him a command to give it to us. So we have to take it. So we did send go to see the group of advice on power said, but the person went, the places she didn't get it and she went other places and she bought like 20 pounds to share it for everybody. He told us, I think it was kind of the Wednesday or Friday, or a week, that we're going to have a flood tsunami. And it's going to start it from Trilani down to Pier 1. And as the Bible said, if you are in the field or in the house, you're not to run back to take clothes or anything as the scripture will teach us then we should run to the mountain for rescue each prophecy that you prophesy you will see fulfilled mm -hmm. yes yeah, so we, you know we were believing then say he was a prophet and we were going along with it right so when he said um it's gonna be a star a flood and um, we must buy up food stuff and all you know the things are gonna happen you're not gonna get any food Place is gonna sell out and must buy food, so stop up the house and all those stuff. He, he, he always told us that that things coming, things coming, and you know, if he told us, like, say, before the um, COVID, he'll tell us that he saw the a white tent pitch, the arm, the sword, the police, and all those stuff. And after a while, everything just happened. So, you know, we will always believe them, say, whenever time he prophesy, I tell us something it come to pass. So we keep along believing that it's a true thing because whatever he said it always happened. So we keep on believing in him that he's a prophet then and you know, we don't want to disbelieve anything that he prophesy and you know all those stuff. So we believe you know when when she called me and said he said we should drop everything and come we said mm, how can man there so how come you change so quick? So we said you know what for you Anyway, she said she's at Antrol, I say, Well, if you can't ask the driver, if you can't drive, come and pick me up. Maybe they can do what I do. I never knew that they were saying to come in the ark. So when I went to the church that evening about 6 o'clock, I saw not a member outside the church, both the church gate out on the road. They were all barefooted and stuff like that. And then he started calling me. And those people, when he called him, there was a guy at the gate, he would open the gate and let them in. And like somebody identified him, said, Who's at my gate? Someone would identify himself. And would say, You're yeah, not on the list. And those things until that lady that went in, that they said her throat was slash. Her name was called, and she was going inside. She make an attempt for about two times to go inside or three times and they said you cannot come in if you come in without your stuff, you're not gonna come out back. But we didn't know that you have to bring like 
you came so pleased with your clothes and all those stuff. We didn't know. I didn't know. Because we went there with just, I went there with only a rug and my Bible and my thing. I'm going to church. It's church I'm going. So when I went there and saw the people go outside, when they, some of them came call and they were going in, they had suitcase, pants with clothes, and we were saying, How oh, is this possible? And we never have no knowledge of this. What's going on? I saw things throwing out from out the church over the balcony. I said, What's going on? And then, I mean, you know, things were not looking at the time like, Oh, I expect to go and see. I expect to go and see his excellence into a room or something. He wasn't in a room. And because of the confusion of the people, everybody was trying to rap. Everybody was trying to talk how they don't have any things to take in and then get to understand they cannot come out if they go inside. I heard when somebody is like he would say, kill it, kill it. But I don't know what he was say, killing it. I don't know what, but I know I saw a call. The real and prance, we didn't tell them back. So two men who said you can't run fast, we just stand in here to be small here. So we Step sideways that if it, if a stampede, me can't get that a stampede, me want to protect myself. Cause everybody started to run. Cause we don't know if it's the big kid that how was gonna run through or what. So we took away. And it's there and then now I saw police driver. One passed first to up, then another one came, stopping in the middle of the road, the road here. And then I saw the, all the police they come up and pointing the gun up there. And then I saw soldier and said, no, what's going on? Something not right here, man. So we never get inside? No, we didn't go inside. The ladder was outside. The ladder was outside. So we were there and we were praying, praying, because, you know, we still never understand what was going on that time. We have no idea what was taking place earlier on. We are all there innocent. Never understand what's going on up until now. Hmm. And we were there until the soldier came, then more soldier came, then more police came, and they were talking to each other, signaling each other, and said they must take cover because he was giving them um, like direction or signal what to do or whatever. And one of the time I heard he was praying and asking, like God should send fire, and the big police force who squats like came down upon. The Israel, the true is Hebrew Israelite, something like that. And I heard one of the police say the man saying fire upon them. And they were shooting up there, shooting up there. And it, you know, I was just looking up there to see if they were gonna kill because a lot of people were kneeling down on the veranda with him up there. They were kneeling down praying. So we were there praying down there. I said, Look, oh God, none of them did anything. But when I hear the gunshots, and I look, I still looking at him and I saw he do he not no shot reach him. I said, mm -mm, this not look right. This man look like a real perfect picture. That I in my mind at the time, you know. Because, you know, when you're shooting at somebody and you see a shot, you can't catch them to be a motor shot, they say, go up here. And they say, what's going on? And we were there praying, praying until the soldier said, um, there's those people over there in white. Let them move from there, let them move from there. And we were there praying, praying, praying until. I heard a soldier, so came up on here, running up on here, cursing a lot of bad words and said, Oh, one man, I'm afraid that he pass it, no kill him, what's it not, man, what's it not, man? You know, we said, Lord oh, Jesus, how are they going here tonight? But you know, we were just looking up the church to see what was going on, and then a lot of police, they saw the whole place, every angry police. After the police, they said, I'm going to kill this man and the, the soldier. And they go for the tables and they, you know, I was standing at one corner, I could look up at the veranda where he was sitting. And I remember one time I saw he, a tall broad shoulder man in like a broad green type bush jack. And you know, he was shaking up himself as if like, you know, he was, you know, saying that, you know, like somebody would say, I'm okay or whatever. But, you know, I was keeping my eyes closed to see what was going on. And then I remember again, I saw he was sitting in the chair and he was circling his neck, circling his neck. And I heard him say, get me out of this body, get me out of this body. And then after the police had, the soldier them started to throw the tear gas and all those stuff over here. I don't see anybody else in the chair. 
and then they take us from there and take us down to the other area, the other reserve people on the south and on the south. And that's where it is until they call for the truck. And then when they tear off the ply that was at the gate and started to swarm the churchyard now, we were way down to the other end, so we did not know what was going on up there at the time until they take out the people that was inside and they came out and they are shake, shaking, shaking, so and you know they were you know everybody was in shock and pain and grief and everything and we said oh my god what really were going on and we even up until the time we didn't need to get knowledge of what was taking place inside. If, when we go by the station in we go down in the soldier truck and when we went by the station, we came running into the soldier that when we came out of the truck, then we went into the line and we go inside the station, we were running again. I remember the inspector lady said to us, You people are so lucky. I'm not lucky, you know, not God. God went upon our side tonight. If the police ain't ever come to the whole land of the tonight. So, even at the time when the inspector lady said that to me. You may wonder why she said that. Because you know we still never know what was going on. Until we used the bathroom and we came back around and they said they are going to take us upstairs. That we can sit and after a while they would check who need help or whatever we need and so on. Calm them down and then they would came up and said to us there's a lady died with her chum slash and one two dead or one dead. We said, Jesus, no. that's where we got a shock. Because we said, hey, woman short slash. We said, no, this is not real, something wrong. And then no who were inside. I mean they started to tell us what was happening inside and all those stuff. That's how we have an idea of what was taking place. Uh, we outside have no idea, no knowledge of what was taking place before we were here. You were like a lamb led to the slaughter. So you have mixed feelings now as to Yes. Yeah. Even though on one side you are thinking that the fact that what transpired in the church on Sunday night mm -hmm. would have showed him up to be a monster. Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't really say sure enough to say a monster because I don't really come to the fact of knowledge up until this moment what really take place. Okay. So you are still searching for the truth? I would like to know the truth. Definitely, I would like to know the truth behind all of this. But now that she's gone. But now that he's gone, he died here. There is no truth for us to know. And what we were really in, or what we were really up against.